good morning. It's Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right. It's me, Uncle Lou, live for you on YouTube today. And thanks for watching. I really appreciate it also. And two, and it's time to pick some winners today. I'm going to do a series of these videos throughout the season every single week on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Uh, sometimes some other days too, but mainly Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And up today, the SEC games on the schedule for week one. I'm going to run through every single SEC game on the schedule this weekend, talk a little bit about the game, and pick a winner and a loser for you against the spread. Don't forget, all the odds that I'm using in this video are provided by the good people over at betnow.eu. There's a link in the description of this video you can click that will take you over there. If you make a deposit, make sure you use the bonus code Uncle Lou, one word, all lowercase letters, and they will give you a 100% bonus on whatever you deposit. Free money. Uh, yeah, it doesn't get no better than that. Help you cover some of your losses, maybe, too. Anyway, let's get going with today's video, SEC matchups for week one. Let's go! All right, here we go, week one SEC games. Uh, here's a look at all the games coming up this week in the SEC. Uh, okay, some good ones, some okay ones, some bad ones, and some terrible ones, right? I mean, some of these games are so bad and so wopsided, there's not even odds or lines available for these games. Sometimes they'll release some uh, late in the week for some of these lopsided games. But uh, a few good ones we'll spend uh, uh, the most amount of time talking about uh, the good games, and we'll just sort of gloss over the ones uh, that aren't so good. But uh, there it is, the complete schedule for week one. All right, I'm going to run through these in chronological order. So starting with a game on Thursday, right? You have Northwestern State at Texas A&M. Jimbo Fisher's first game as head coach at Texas A&M after getting fired from Florida State last year. Of course, Texas A&M parted ways with Kevin Sumlin. He's out in Arizona now. So game one of the Jimbo Fisher era this Thursday night, uh, 8.30 p.m. on the SEC Network. And there is no line available for this game. They may put one out late in the week, but this is going to be such a lopsided game. I mean, Texas A&M is going to win this one. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Uh, reasons to watch this game. Well, new coach, uh, new staff, new philosophies at Texas A&M. Worth keeping an eye on this game, right? Especially if you're playing, if your team is playing Texas A&M somewhere down the line later on in the season. Worth keeping an eye on this game just to figure out what exactly it is uh, Jimbo Fisher might be looking to do there at Texas A&M. Do they play multiple quarterbacks? Do they have their one guy and that's it? Uh, are, are they going to uh, throw more, pass more? What does the defense look like? I mean, there's always reasons to watch a team play week one, right? Uh, to sort of get an idea of where they're at, even if it's against a terrible opponent like this is. It's a home game. Uh, 12th man will be rocking. Primetime game, Thursday night, 8.30 SEC Network. Texas A&M will win big. All right, and that takes us into the Saturday games and a whole uh, long list of uh, games, a whole slate of games here uh, coming up for the SEC on Saturday, starting at noon, running through prime time. Uh, things get kicked off Saturday, September 1st at noon. Coastal Carolina at South Carolina. This game's on the SEC network at noon. Uh, it seems like a long time ago South Carolina lost to the Citadel, doesn't it? Uh, they're not that team anymore. Say what you want about Will Muschamp. Yes, I think South Carolina fans are way, way, way overconfident on their team this year. But I've been saying it since pretty much last season ended, since, since about February, really. Carolina will probably be favored in 10 of their games, uh, at least eight or nine. Uh, they won't be favored against Georgia and Clemson, and I don't expect them to win either of those two games. But if Carolina can run the table against teams they're supposed to beat, I think they have a, a shot at 10 and two. I think it's more likely that they win eight or nine. Uh, but they will be better than most of the teams that they play this year, and that's definitely the case this Saturday when they host Coastal Carolina. Coastal Carolina um, is bad even for bad teams. They were three and nine last year. Uh, these two teams played back in uh, 2013, I wanna say it was. And, and I know that two totally different teams, I get that. Uh, but South Carolina beat them 70 to 10 
Uh, that was one of uh, Spurrier's three years in a row where he won 11 games. So that was one of the best teams South Carolina ever had. Beat Coastal Carolina 3-9. and nine. Last year, was that an outlier for Coastal Carolina at 3-9? and nine? They've been winning 9, 10, or more games um, for the last five or six years, really, including that, that the year they lost 70-10, to 10, except for last year uh, when they really plummeted down to 3-9. and nine. Will South Carolina get caught looking ahead to Week 2 in the Georgia game? Not against Coastal Carolina. South Carolina is favored in this game by 29 and a half over on betnow.eu. Uh, so a huge favorite, almost 30 points. I think they cover. Um, if I was going to play this game, I would take South Carolina and I would give the 29 and a half points. Uh, I, now I'm going to I'm going to pick every single game against the spread, but at the end of the video, I'll tell you the three that I'm that I'm most confident in, and uh, those are the three I would bet if I was going to bet them. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna pick them. Uh, pick all of them. But for the purposes of keeping up how I'm doing throughout the season, I'm picking three uh, off of this slate, and I'll tell you which three those are at the end. But I would take South Carolina in this one if I was going to bet it. I would give the 29 and a half. I think South Carolina rolls and wins big uh, and starts out 1-0 before the big matchup next week against Georgia. All right, uh, another noon game. This one on ESPN. Ole Miss at Texas Tech. This will be a good game, especially if you like offense, because there won't be much defense in this game at all. Uh, both teams struggled defensively last year. Both teams like to throw the ball around. Texas Tech uh, does have a new quarterback. I like Ole Miss's quarterback situation better than I like Texas Tech's quarterback situation. It's definitely more of a known with that TAMU over at, uh, over at Ole Miss. Uh, this is a neutral site game being played in Houston. Uh, this is going to be a good one. This will be a high-scoring game. Like I, I said, forget defense in this one. Ole Miss still on probation. Uh, probably the best set of receivers Ole Miss does in the SEC, maybe second or third. Uh, but in any case, no matter no matter how you want to rank them, the top three for sure in terms of wide receiving cores in the SEC. Ole Miss is going to sling the ball around. Texas Tech going to sling the ball around too. Who do I trust more in this game? Texas Tech is favored by two and a half. I disagree. I would take Ole Miss in this one. I would give the two and a half if you're nervous. But really, you could bet this one on the money line. And if you don't know what that means, uh, if you don't want to, if you don't need the two and a half points or you don't think you need the two and a half points, you can just bet Ole Miss to win straight up uh, and, and it pays more. You, it plays, pays plus 115 right now. So you bet 100, you win 115 if you take Ole Miss outright. Uh, you give the two and a half, you bet 100, you'll win about 90. That's, that's just how that works. Um, if you don't understand how that works, maybe you shouldn't be gambling to start with. Uh, but anyway, uh, I think this will be a close game, especially in the first half. I think Ole Miss will pull away uh, late and probably win this game by somewhere in the neighborhood of 7 to 14 points. I don't think it'll be that close at the end. I would take Ole Miss on the money line. But if you're nervous, like I said, you can give the two and a half. Bonus bet on this one. The over-under is 67 on this game. It'll go over. I, I could see this being a 40-30 uh, a to 30 type of deal. I, I would definitely take the over uh, as well on that one if you're one of those type of people that likes to do that. Uh, let's see. What else? 3-30. Now, here's a big one here. Auburn at Washington. Uh, of course, Auburn ranks sixth in the, uh, in, in the coaches poll. Washington ninth. This one's a neutral site game played in Atlanta, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Auburn coming off two straight losses there the SEC championship game to Georgia, and the Peach Bowl, uh, <laughs> where they lost to the one-handed man. Uh, listen, uh, Auburn can, Auburn's not a good team on the road. They're just not. And, and sometimes there are teams that go through stretches that are like that. Uh, it doesn't mean Auburn is overall a bad team, but y you can't look at Auburn last year and come to any other conclusion other than that, that they're a different team on the road. They lost to Clemson on the road. They lost to LSU on the road. They lost to Georgia on the road. And they lost to Central Florida. On, all their losses were on the road. Uh, just not the same team. This is in the same building. They've lost two straight there. Washington, huge preseason expectations. Everyone's pick almost to win the Pac-12. Uh, a matchup of top 10 teams here. Washington's got an elite offense. Um, sometimes down here in the South, we don't pay a whole lot of attention to what's going on out on the West Coast. And let's just be real. Most years, there's no reason to, and it may turn out that there's no reason to this year either, but Jake Browning is a legit quarterback. Uh, they got that running back, uh, Miles Gaskin, is that his name? This guy can get gone in a hurry. Uh, one missed tackle on this guy, 
Uh, one missed assignment. He gets around the edge. He's gone. No one's catching him. Auburn's got plenty of team speed on defense. They don't have Miles Gaskin type speed. Uh, he's a home run hitter uh, for sure. Uh, Auburn, same type of thing on offense. Jared Stidham, pretty good quarterback, accurate. Can get the ball down the field. Needs time to throw the ball, though. Uh, he needs a clean pocket. He doesn't like, uh, he doesn't perform well under pressure. Uh, you can see some of their losses last year as proof of that. Will, will, will Auburn's offensive line, which is replacing several starters from last year, be able to hold up against Washington's front? We'll find out. You say the same thing again. I mean, these are even, these are, these are evenly matched teams here, in my opinion. Uh, Auburn's got an elite defensive front, too. Will they be able to make Jake Browning uncomfortable? Uh, who's got the advantage in the running game? Probably Washington. Uh, Auburn's got some unknowns. Uh, Cam Martin will get the start. Auburn swears uh, he's elite. We'll see. Auburn's had a 1,000-yard rusher for like nine years in a row. Uh, so this should be Cam Martin's year. We'll find out. Um, two good defenses. Washington's defensive backs are elite. If, if, if they're able to cover... Auburn's receivers. It could be a long day for Auburn. Uh, but this is going to be a good game. This is truly a toss-up game, in my opinion, and one that could go either way. 3.30 ABC Saturday in Atlanta. Auburn is favored by one and a half. I've been picking Washington in this game all offseason. I'm going to stick with that. I'll take Washington. Give me the one and a half points, though. Uh, just in, I, I mean, I could see this game in in 31 to 30, something like that. I would need that one and a half point if that were the case. Uh, but, but this is a scary game to bet because this really could go either way. It's hard. It, it's it's hard to really pick any games week one because you don't really know what the teams are going to look like right off the bat. It's even harder uh, when there's two really good teams playing and, and the spread is a small one and a half. Uh, Auburn a favorite here. I, I'm going to go with my gut. The same thing I've been picking all off season. I'm going to ride with Washington. Give me the one and a half points. But this is going to be a great game. All right, also up at 3.30 on Saturday, Austin P at Georgia. No line on this game. This one will be a blowout for sure. Austin P is not a terrible team for the classification that they're in, but they just cannot compete or hang with the University of Georgia. It just, it, it's just a mismatch. Uh, do I feel sorry for Austin P? No. And I'll talk more about this on Friday when I do a Georgia Austin P video, but uh, listen, uh, no one makes Austin P or any of these other small schools play these huge schools. No one makes them do it. They do it for the money, uh, th and they're going to get plenty of it for coming to Athens and taking a beating on Saturday, which, will, what'll, which is what will happen. Uh, UGA ranked third in the coaches' poll. UGA will win this game by as many points as Kirby Smart deems necessary. You'll see a ton of backups in this game playing for Georgia uh, a whole lot in the second half. You'll see some backups playing in the first half. Uh, would be my guess. This is just going to be a runaway game. Uh, th this will be a celebration of last year's SEC title as all this will be. They'll raise the banner, I'm sure, uh, before the game starts. The crowd will go nuts, and uh, Georgia will take the field and run away with this one. It's, it just won't be close. Unless you're a Georgia fan and you just want to see some players play for Georgia because it's been so long, then there's no really other reason to watch this game, is it? No. All right, then you got another good one at 332. Tennessee at West Virginia. Another neutral site game. This one played in Charlotte. West Virginia is ranked 17th, I believe, in the coaches' poll, and they are favored by 10 points on betnow.eu over Tennessee this Saturday, 3.30 on CBS. This is another game I'm interested to keep an eye on here. Uh, again, if you've been watching my videos during the offseason, you know I think West Virginia is winning this game. Uh, the spread on this game was at 9.5 for a long time. Uh, that would have been the time to bet this game, in my opinion. Ten points. A, a lot of games end uh, with a difference of ten points, right? 30 to 20, 20 to 10, 27 to 17, 34 to 24. Uh, let me ask you this. What's more likely, West Virginia wins by 14 or Tennessee wins by three? I think it's probably more likely that West Virginia wins by 14. I would take West Virginia and give the ten points in this game. I'm going to wait though till Thursday or Friday, possibly even Saturday morning to see if this line doesn't move down to nine and a half. That would be a much better bet in my opinion. But uh, I just think Tennessee's got too far to go. Brand new coaching staff, quarterback concerns. West Virginia's got an elite quarterback and Will Greer is going to light Tennessee up. I think West Virginia uh, wins this game fairly easily. All right. And one more game at 332. You got Central Michigan at Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky is a 17-point home favorite in this one. This one comes on Saturday, 3.30 on ESPN 
you. This is a tricky game here. I have not been high on Kentucky this offseason. I do like Benny Snell. However, Kentucky does not have a single quarterback on their team that's ever taken a Division I snap in college football. They're going to go with a quarterback out of Oregon who never played at Oregon, transferred with the JUCO route last year. Now he's landed at Kentucky. The guy's got some talent, but again, never taken a snap in Division I football. Central Michigan giving 17 points uh, or getting 17 points here on the road to Kentucky. Uh, Central Michigan third in the nation last year in takeaways. If that quarterback for Kentucky can't hold on to the ball or makes dumb decisions through the air and Central Michigan can get a couple of takeaways, I guess it would be possible for Central Michigan to keep this game close and maybe even win it. I don't see that happening. I think Kentucky gets a big win here at home. I think Benny Snell runs wild in this game. I think Kentucky's quarterback shows some flashes uh, of, of what – he could be down the road, and I think Kentucky gets the job done here. I'm not sure if they can win this game by 17 points, though. If I was going to bet this game, I would probably ride with Central Michigan and take the 17 points. I could see this being a 10 to 14 point game. Uh, unless Kentucky's just better than I think they're going to be, but I. I, I've got to go with Central Michigan and just give me 17 points and, and, and hold my breath. All right, 4 o'clock over on the SEC Network. Uh, a real must-watch here. Uh, UT Martin at Mizzou. Wee! No line on this game. This one will be a runaway. Drew Locke will throw for as many yards as the coaching staff wants him to and allows him to. They will absolutely destroy UT Martin. I do not think for one second that you're going to see the same Missouri the first half of this season that you saw the first half of last season. Uh, a Missouri that looked absolutely lost, absolutely terrible, uh, almost got beat by, uh, was it Southeast Missouri State? I mean, somebody you've never heard of um, I, I, early in the season. I don't think that's happening this year. I think their defense will take a step forward. Is they, are they going to have a great defense this year? No, they're not. But their offense is the real deal. They've got some receivers that can make some plays, and Drew Locke is probably the best passing quarterback in the SEC. Uh, new offensive coordinator, uh, <laughs> Tennessee fans' favorite person in the world, Derek Dooley. Uh, yeah, Tennessee fans still blaming Dooley. Uh, but uh, this game will be a runaway, a blowout, a molly whopping, a curb stomping. I mean, whatever word you want to use. No line on this game right now. Uh, maybe that will change later in the week and they'll throw a number up. But as of right now, nothing. But Missouri will win this game huge. All right, also over on the SEC Network at 4 o'clock, Eastern Illinois at Arkansas. Uh, another one that people are setting their alarm clocks to make sure they don't miss, right? No line on this game either. Uh, Eastern Illinois, what is that? My, I don't know. Uh, is it possible Eastern Illinois is worse than regular Illinois? Maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, Four o'clock, SEC Network, no line on this one. Is Arkansas going to be a very good team this year? No. I'm a Chad Morris believer. I think he will get Arkansas turned around. Don't think it'll happen this year. Probably won't happen next year. I do think you'll see some improvement next year, though, but... Uh, it's just going to take Chad Morris a while. I mean, he wants to do that spread you out thing and run 100 plays a game, and you just can't do that with a roster full of Burt Bielema players, right? I mean, Burt Bielema wanted everybody on the team to be 400 pounds, uh, run downhill, that kind of thing. I mean, that, that's just not what Chad Morris is looking to do. Uh, will, will there be some situations this year where you're watching Arkansas's offense and you say, whoa, uh, you know, like a glimpse into the future type thing, like, okay, I like what I see here. Uh, wake me up in two years. Yeah, I think you will see some of that, especially in a game like this against Eastern Illinois. Uh, but when it comes to playing the big boys in the SEC, Arkansas is still a couple of years away. Uh, but they should win this game without a problem. If this game is even close, or God forbid Arkansas uh, loses, what an embarrassment to the SEC that would be, and to Chad Morris. You can't lose your first game uh, at an SEC school, even though it's Arkansas, to something called Eastern Illinois. Uh, no line on this game, but give me Arkansas, they'll win huge. All right, 730 over on ESPNU, uh, rank, another ranked team, Mississippi State, coming in ranked, uh, what are they, 18th in the coaches' poll, hosting Stephen F. Austin. Another game that's got no business being played except for money. Stephen F. Austin will make enough money in this game uh, to prop up their athletic department for the next couple of years. So, again, a team I don't feel sorry for. No line on this game. Mississippi State will win this game by a bunch. Uh, Nick Fitzgerald coming back from a broken leg in the Egg Bowl last year. Uh, how much time will they let him play this week? We'll see. Uh, I, I'm kind of under the... Oh, he's suspended, isn't he? 
I believe he's suspended. If I, I believe I did hear that yesterday, he's suspended. And that's bad news for Mississippi State. The guy, your best player, arguably, quarterback, leader of your team, uh, coming back off a broken leg in the last game last year, perfect timing to schedule a team like uh, uh, Stephen F. Austin, whatever the hell that is, let this guy get his legs back underneath him, test his leg out in live game action against an opponent that you're going to run right over, and he goes out and, and, and what is it, I guess the famous uh, broke team rules or whatever is that all they're saying about it, I don't know. Somebody can let me know in the comments section if they know exactly what he did. Uh, so, no, he's got to sit out this game. Uh, Mississippi State's still going to win this game. I mean, uh, Stephen F. Austin can't compete. Uh, up front on the offensive and defensive lines with Mississippi State. Mississippi State's going to have a good defense. Mississippi State is a way better team than what people are giving them credit for. I, all offseason, nobody wanted to talk about them except me. Uh, now, they're ranked 18th, and you got people acting surprised, like, why are they ranked 18th? Listen, people, they could very well be the second-best team in the SEC West behind Alabama, and I don't think anybody would be all that surprised. If I were to tell you Alabama's going to go 11-1, and pick the team they lose to, who are you going to pick? Probably, probably either Auburn or... Or Mississippi State. This, I mean, look at that uh, Bama Mississippi State game last year. Came down to the fourth quarter, a one possession game. Mississippi State is a good team. A lot of returning talent. Uh, they upgraded uh, coaches by getting rid of Dan Mullen. Uh, Florida, what are you doing? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure anyone knows. Um, but but you're gonna find out when you play at Mississippi State here in a couple of weeks and get absolutely road graded. But anyway, uh, Mississippi State. Uh, Sands, Nick Fitzgerald will still win this game without a problem. All right, speaking of Florida, 7.30 on the SEC Network. Florida hosts none other than Charleston Southern. Another game with no line. This one will be a blowout. Uh, Florida has uh, announced Felipe Franks as their starter. Uh, well, that was that's the real headline. What, what the headline meant, or what it should have said, is Florida forfeits season by announcing Felipe Franks starting quarterback. Uh, we've seen what that guy can do, and no one was impressed, including Florida fans. The same Florida fans that are trying to tell everybody now how great Felipe Franks is going to be. Those are the same Florida fans that spent all last season crying about what a terrible quarterback he was. Now, all of a sudden, Mullen names him the starter, and, and, and suddenly the guy's going to know what he's doing. We'll find out uh, week one when you host Charleston Southern. Whee! Uh, listen, I could play uh, quarterback for Florida this week and beat Charleston Southern. Lance from Jasper uh, could play quarterback for Florida. No, no, he couldn't. <laughs> no, he couldn't. But I could uh, and still beat Charleston Southern. No line on this game. Uh, Florida will win this game big, and it, and it will mean absolutely nothing. Florida fans are going to talk about, after this game ends, Florida fans are going to talk about how great the offense looked, how great Dan uh, Mullins' play calling was, how elite their defense looked, and I'll spend all week uh, reminding them that they played Charleston Southern. But, yeah, Florida wins this one big. All right, well, if you're looking for uh, an SEC team to embarrass itself this weekend, this might be your best chance. Saturday night, 7.30 on the SEC Network, Middle Tennessee State at Vandy. Vandy only a three-point favorite in this one over on betnow.eu, so people expecting a close game uh, here. Now, these two teams played last year. Vanderbilt beat them 28-6. Uh, didn't allow a single third down conversion for Middle Tennessee State. Now, Middle Tennessee State went 0 for third down for the entire uh, game. Uh, Middle Tennessee State did beat a Power 5 team last year, though, Syracuse. Is Syracuse better or worse than Vandy? I, I'll let you be the judge of that. I don't want to make the three Vanderbilt fans mad. Uh, but, yeah, only a three-point favorite at Vandy. Uh, Vandy loses Ralph Webb, probably the best running back they've ever had, but they do get Kyle Shermer back. And Shermer looked really good last year against Middle Tennessee State. Vandy's defense looked really good against Middle Tennessee State last year, too. Vandy's defense looked good the first three games. Like Vandy was ranked in the top five of almost every defensive category in America first three games last year. Then they played Alabama and Georgia and got blown out and lost a bunch of other games and finished the season not ranked anywhere meaningful at all on defense. But can they start out hot again this year against Middle Tennessee State? We'll find out. Uh, I would take Vandy in this one. I, I, people are, you know, you see this a lot. People are so down on a team, and then they surprise you week one, and then you see a few teams that people will be super high on, and they disappoint you week one. I don't think Vanderbilt's a good team. I don't think they're making a bowl game this year uh, or anything like that. But I think they surprise a few folks week one. I think Shermer has a good game through the air. I think the defense plays good enough uh, to control 
uh, Middle Tennessee State's offense, and I like Vandy in this one, and I'll give it three points. I think Vanderbilt wins by more than three. All right, that brings us to the last two marquee games out of the SEC for week one. Louisville at Alabama, uh, neutral site game, and Miami at LSU, neutral site game. We'll start with Louisville at Alabama. N nobody really expects this to be a close game, I don't think. Louisville uh, loses Lamar Jackson, one of the best players they've ever had, Heisman Trophy winner, uh, elite offensive playmaker. Even with Lamar Jackson, Louisville was stuck in the 8-9 win range. <sighs> Are they really going to be better without him, year one without him? I, I don't think so. Uh, and you say, well, Lou, Alabama's got quarterback questions, too. Yeah, but they're trying to choose between, uh, well, I'm not even going to get into the Alabama quarterback situation here. I'll just end up this bit, you know, I'll talk for 10 minutes about that. Both quarterbacks will play in this game for Alabama. Two will, will look better than Hurts because uh, he is better. Uh, and then this will be Tua's team. That, that's my prediction as far as what happens with the QB situation. Anyway, Alabama's a 24-and-a-half point favorite. That's a lot of points to give at a neutral site against another Power 5 team on opening weekend. A lot of points. But Alabama has a history of coming out and dominating teams in week one uh, and round one of the playoffs. What does that tell you? Uh, that tells me that with extra time to prepare, Nick Saban is better than whoever is on the other sideline. Th that's what that tells me, okay? Uh, Alabama's got some question marks on the back end. Uh, if you're looking for the upset here, what, what do you need to happen? You need Louisville's quarterback to come out and throw for 350 yards and light up Alabama's secondary. The secondary loses their top six players from last year, so a totally revamped secondary for the Crimson Tide. Can Louisville take advantage of that? No. No. Uh, not, to the, not to the extent that they need to, okay? Alabama's going to dominate this game, in my opinion. I don't think Louisville's going to be able to do much uh, at all offensively. I really, really don't. If I was going to bet this game, again, 24 and a half is a lot of points to give. If I was going to bet this one, though, uh, I can't bet against Alabama with extra time to prepare here. I can't bet against Nick Saban with this much time to prepare. If I was going to bet this game, give me Alabama and lay the 24 and a half points. All right, and the last one here, Miami at LSU, neutral site game played in Texas. Is this at Jerry World? I think it is in Texas, though. Uh, neutral site game, obviously a lot closer to LSU. Miami fans, let's just be real, they're not traveling to this game. Miami fans don't even travel to home games. Uh, and yes, they do have to travel to home games because Miami doesn't have an on-campus stadium. Uh, Miami's attendance is, is just pitiful and, and pathetic. Uh, the, probably the biggest, outside of Alabama, Miami definitely has uh, the biggest percentage of bandwagon fans. Right? I mean, Miami loses a few games a year. You look in the stands, it'd be eight, 9,000 people at a home game. People be flying airplanes, talking about fire to coach and all this kind of stuff. Bandwagon is no other than Miami fans. Uh, but Miami's a three and a half point favorite in this one over on betnow.eu. Uh, and I do think this will be a close game. I think this will be a really close game. Two things I, I think this will be really close and really low scoring. You remember the Alabama LSU games from back uh, five, six, seven, eight years ago? Uh, I mean, everybody remembers like the six to three game, but yeah, you know, the, those were a lot of defensive, low scoring type games. That's how I look for this game uh, to be. LSU doesn't have a single running back on their roster that's ever scored a college uh, touchdown. Uh, whereas, you know, the last three or four years, they've had names like Fournette and Geist back there to sort of carry the load on offense. They got to find somebody new to do that. Ed Orgeron, not a good coach. He's in over his head. I've been saying this forever. Uh, this could very well be Ed Orgeron's last year uh, on the Bayou there. Uh, Mark Rick, uh, obvious coaching advantage here in this game with all this extra time to prepare. Uh, say what you want about Mark Rick, and Lord knows I've said plenty. Uh, he's a better coach than Ed Orgeron. But Miami, too, has been carried by its defense uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, their linebackers are absolutely elite. They may have the best three starting linebackers as a group in America. They all started as freshmen, uh, now they're juniors. Uh, Quarterman, I think, is the best of the bunch, but all three of them uh, are potential superstars. Um, th this is going to be a close, low-scoring game. Miami's got some quarterback issues. LSU's got some quarterback issues. Uh, LSU, of course, brought in uh, Burrow. Is that his name? From Ohio State. He's going to be the starter, so we'll see how he can do. Miami, are they going to uh, – I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll start Malik Rogier. Uh, he's a fifth-year senior, started last year, took him to the ACC title game. But very inconsistent, especially throwing the ball. Looked terrible the last three or four games of the year. Uh, and Miami lose their last three games of the year, right? Didn't they? Uh, Pittsburgh, Clemson, and uh, Wisconsin. Uh, 
They've got some young freshmen. Uh, Perry, I believe, uh, is the most uh, likely uh, to come in after Rozier. If a change is made at the quarterback situation at, at Miami, he's a young kid that the Miami fans are excited about. Uh, I'm not in love with either one of these offenses. They both have really good defenses. Coaching advantage probably goes to Miami. I think Miami wins this game. But, but I would bet LSU and take three and a half points. I could see this being like a 20 to 17, 24 to 21, 27 to 24, uh, 28 to 27. Some, I could, that's how close I think this game will be. Three and a half points, give me LSU, even though I do think Miami wins the game. Uh, I think it'll be uh, real, real close. That one's Sunday night, 7.30 on ABC. And if LSU loses like I think they will, things are going to heat up in a hurry for uh, – for uh, Ed Orgeron, I, I mean the schedule is brutal. They got to play. They got to play. Of course, Alabama. They got to play Auburn. They got to play Georgia. They got to play Mississippi State. Those are most likely all losses for LSU this year. Things could really get out of hand uh, if things go sideways week one for LSU, uh, like I think they will. Anyway, that's it. That's all the SEC games for week one. Uh, pick you some winners there. Let me give you the three here. I, I'll give you the three I'm most confident in here. I did say I would do that. So let me do that. Here's the three. Here's the three I would play. I, the three I'm most confident in. Give me West Virginia minus 10. But like I mentioned, I'm going to, I would wait till Friday or Saturday to put that in and see if the line doesn't drop to nine and a half. But I would give the 10. I, I, I think it's likely West Virginia runs away with this game. Give me Ole Miss plus two and a half. I think they win the game out right over Texas Tech. I just think Ole Miss is the better team. I'm not really sure, to be honest with you, why Texas Tech is even favored. I think Ole Miss has a negative image um, nationwide because of the scandals and the probations and things like that. And I think that's affecting this line a little bit. I think Ole Miss is the better team. Neither team has a defense. And I like Ole Miss's quarterback better than I like Texas Tech's quarterback. And they definitely have better receivers. I, I think Ole Miss wins a shootout. Your bonus bet on that game, take the over. The over-under is at, uh, did I say 67? Yeah, 67. Bonus bet, take the over. I think it'd be a ton of points scored in that game. My third that I would take is South Carolina at minus 29 and a half. I just think Coastal Carolina is a terrible team. I think South Carolina comes out week one trying to prove that not only can they win games, but that they can dominate games. That's the sign of a team that is really headed in the right direction or, or, or is an elite uh, type team is that they don't just win over these inferior teams, but they completely dominate them. So those would be the three uh, that I would be most comfortable with, the three that I would take. Anyway, that's it for the SEC for week one. I will be back tomorrow to do uh, this same thing, but I will cover teams within the top 25, uh, except for the ones I've already covered out of the SEC. So we'll do the same thing tomorrow with, with top 25 teams. Live show tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern. Live show tomorrow, Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Be sure and click the link at the bottom of this uh, video. Check out the site, www.betnow.eu. Sign up over there, enter promo code Uncle Lou, and they will give you a 100% bonus on whatever you deposit. De deposit $20, they give you $40. Deposit $50, they give you $100. Deposit $100, they give you $200. You, you, you get what I'm saying here. Anyway, appreciate you guys watching. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Thumbs up this video, and I will see you guys next time.